You can check out his podcast. It's very popular. The Ringer and HBO. Bill Simmons with us on ESPN Radio. A lot to talk to him about, and thank you for joining us. But uh, first and foremost, what do you think is going to actually happen with Brady, and what are you hoping happens with Brady? I think it's going to be a dance for the next, I don't know, 10, 11 weeks. And I think he set the tone this week. I think he wants more help. Um, I think he wants to go out with a bang with awesome weapons and knows that it's going to end up in that place. I think he's doing this whole dance to try to get the uh, the public on his side because he obviously feels like he didn't have nearly enough weapons this year. They never got... The biggest thing was they never replaced Gronkowski, which was unforgivable and felt unforgivable as it was happening. It was just weird. Brady's always succeeded when he's had at least one tight end target, and they didn't give that to him. They took some other swings. You know, they spent a second rounder on Sanu. He was bad. They spent a first-round pick on Harry, who didn't really help them this year. I'm not ready to give up on him, but when you think A.J. Brown and Debo Samuel and... uh a couple of the other ones that did well, the rookie receivers, and he just wasn't an impact guy. And then the Antonio Brown thing was the big one. And you could feel it when they let go of Antonio Brown, and some of the stories came out about the uh, Belichick and Brady really kind of battling craft about trying to keep this guy. Brady was really upset. Brady stayed on Brown's side even after they released him. So I think he knew at that point that he just didn't have the weapons. So to me it's all about for him, where am I going to get my weapons? I want to obliterate every record there is. And if it's not going to happen here, it'll happen elsewhere. But I think it's going to happen in New England. Bill, I laugh at Patriot fans who say, you know, they should be ashamed of themselves. They didn't replace Gronk. You don't just replace yeah, Gronk. Pretty hard. We've never it's seen hard. anything yeah. like that yeah, in that it's position. It's hard to replace him. Yeah, but Stu Gatz, they didn't have even a, like a league average tight end. Right. Like they didn't, when I say they didn't replace Gronk, like I'm saying they didn't. They didn't actually go get a starting tight end. They they ended up getting like practice squad guys, and then they lured Ben Watson out of retirement, who's thirty eight. We had Ben Watson ten years ago. He wasn't good ten years ago. <laughs> so you know, they there were opportunities. They you know the guy uh, Dawson Knox on Buffalo, who was third round pick. They passed on him. They took a running back four picks later, who didn't even end up playing. I, I thought they could have had a chance to trade for Kyle Rudolph potentially. They supposedly were ready to sign Jared Cook, and he didn't want to go to New England because he thought Gronk was coming back and went to New Orleans. And it was stuff like that, and I, I just they never got around to it. And, you know, this Brady-Belichick thing, those guys have known each other for 20 years, which is basically a parallel to you guys. Yeah. Right. You, you guys, two decades, you're just tired of each other, but you know it's a winning partnership. you got to stay together, but as soon as you go no, to commercial, I feel so seen. Talking, <laughs> Me too. A lot of eye rolling, kind of people wondering, but would I be better off without this other guy? It's the same thing. <laughs> you think Belichick uh, wants Brady back as his quarterback? He laughed a little too hard at that, Stu Gatz. <laughs> it was funny. Stu Gatz was like, that was great. Oh, I know that's point. what Dan is thinking all the time. That's why it was so funny. Uh, do you think Belichick wants Brady back? I look, this all goes back to the Garoppolo trade and you know, the fact that I think he thought there was a succession plan in place. I don't think he expected Brady to play this long. And when he it seems like he was basically forced to trade Garoppolo, didn't shop him. Seth Wickersham's done a really good job of with the intelligence of breaking down like just they never shopped him anywhere else. He was like, oh, I have to trade Garoppolo. Well, I'm putting him in a position to succeed. It was weirdly like a spiteful trade. You know, it goes, ask for a second-round pick from San Francisco. And they're like, really? Uh, sure. And they just, that's it. And that was the trade. And I think in his head, he, you know, there's this alternate universe where Brady just retires after the Falcons Super Bowl, walks off into the sunset. Garoppolo takes over. And there you go. But I, it even it's the same thing when they passed on Lamar Jackson, you know, a year and a half ago, whenever that was, where I think once he realized Brady was insistent on playing until his mid-40s, which is his right if he feels like he can do it, um, it's like, well, why am I going to develop this, you know, why, how am I going to develop Lamar Jackson if he has no chance of playing behind Brady? So, you know, I, it's a bummer in the sense that there's going to be a year where it's going to be ugly. 
And we see this happen in sports sometimes when you have these great athletes and they're just convinced they can keep playing and keep playing, and then there's going to be a year where they can't. We saw it with Peyton Manning that last Denver year where by the time that season was over, even though they won the Super Bowl, um, he, you know, he could barely throw the ball downfield, and then he wanted to play the next year, if you remember, and nobody wanted to sign him. And that's how he went out, where he was, you know, lobbying to these 20 other teams that needed a quarterback, and all of them were like, we're good. And it's going to happen to Brady at some point, but I don't think it's this year. And so what needs to happen, because Bill Simmons with a CEO of The Ringer, you catch him uh, HBO on his own podcast. What what needs, a winded Bill Simmons with us on ESPN Radio. <laughs> Are you walking on that treadmill at 3.8? Um, so ex- <laughs> explain to me, uh, like Cameron Brait, if they trade for him, that's good. Brady's coming back. Like, <laughs> I think he wants, you, you look at these other teams, like Breeze has Kamara and Michael Thomas. You know, Tennessee had Derrick Henry and A.J. Brown. You go down the list, everybody's got one or two awesome guys. And he just doesn't have any, you know. And I think Antonio Brown was going to be maybe that guy. And then it it ended up lasting a week. But even in that 10 days when they were together, I think he was like, oh, my God. You know, you saw the same thing when they got Randy Moss in 07. The year before, he had no weapons at all. He had Lawrence Maroney at running back. Rache Caldwell and Bill, hold on. Gaffney, hold, Bill, if I can, hold on a second. The, the, the shipping container's worried about your breathing, and they're they're like they're what's happening. Could be are, eating are, are you okay? Yeah. Like the, everyone here is a little bit. They're they're giving me looks that beg me asking a question. I think I actually think it might be the phone. I'm just I'm just standing. I'm not breathing or doing anything weird. Oh, you're just uh, standing. Wow. I mean. Man, I'm going to go see a doctor after this, Bill. You have a heart I'm in great shape. I'll, I'll do the fitness challenge it. against both of you. <laughs> no, wait. Whoa, oh, wait. No, you will not. Whoa, wait. Whoa. There's no need to be defensive about this. And, of course, to God says, like, no, you will not. I mean, we're worried about you, Bill. I mean. Well, I'm calling from a landline, and I think I have the last landline in America, so that might be the problem. <laughs> the You were saying, though, in terms of what it would have to be specifically. You're saying, because Robert Kraft is out here saying, I hope and pray he's either a patriot or he retires. And it seems to me that it's all under Robert Kraft's control if he wants it to be. Just give Brady whatever he wants. Yeah, but the problem is, let's say Brady's like, it's going to take $79 million for three years for me to stay. The, the way this Patriots team is built, if you're paying him that much, then how are you going to end up getting the weapons that he needs to be happier about what he's doing? You know, And I think it'll be there's going to come a moment when... You know, I, I think that people always say this about when you make a deal, both sides are a little unhappy. And it seems like Brady's been a lot unhappy with the last few deals, and he's taken, you know, less than his market value. I think he's like the 14th QB this year, all that stuff. So, you know, if you have like the Chargers, the Chargers are the one that worry me because I don't know if you guys know this, but there's this new five billion dollar football stadium that's getting built next year that's going up next year it's launching with the rams and the chargers they can't sell seat licenses at all out here nobody cares so and if you're the chargers who are you putting on a poster you put austin eckler <laughs> keenan allen like who, who is who is getting my son interested in the chargers my son can't name four chargers he lives here so you know for them it's like all right Brady, what do you want? Three years, ninety million. All right, now we have somebody we can sell luxury seats or the seat licenses with. And I think that's my fear is that somebody just comes barreling in, like the drunk guy in your fantasy draft, who's like, "Ah, oh, Brady, forty five dollars," and, and then that's it. All of a sudden, he's in the Chargers. He can do it one more time. Uh, Bill, how does this work? Because I'm fascinated by this dynamic. So you have Brady going to Bob Kraft and saying, I want X, Y, and Z. He is bypassing Belichick in that equation? Because what if Belichick doesn't want those players? And that's never really happened before. So that's the other thing. And then, you know, Belichick, he's got two kids on his staff, and he's been there 20 years, and he really cares about his legacy. Like, look at all the stuff he did just in the last 12 months. Like, he did the Saban-Belichick HBO documentary. He went on NFL 100. He did like nine hours with Collinsworth and Eisen, breaking down guys I've never heard of. And it just seems like he cares a little bit more about how he's going to be remembered as in the NFL than I think people give him credit for. So 
you know, if if there's a last, I, the last move for him is almost more interesting to me than the last move for Brady because I, I don't think Brady's. It's not like he's mediocre. Obviously, he's above average still. But man, a lot has to go right with him now. He can't move at all. He, he and I think teams part of the part of the problem with having him a quarterback now is teams know he's not going to scramble at all. Like you play Seattle. You got to put that spy in the middle for Russell Wilson. You basically have to give up a D back because you're so worried about Russell Wilson scrambling around, especially on like third down. Same thing for Watson, Josh Allen, all these guys. And with Brady, it's just you know he's not going anywhere. You know that he likes to do these specific things, and it just seems like like as the season went along, teams just kind of figure out how to play him. Now, if he had a deep threat, maybe that would shift some of it, but. I think it's going to get worse, not better. The guy's going to be 43 next year. It's insane. At some point, you just physically can't be the same person. I think he's going to find that out one of these years. Last one, because we got to get out of here. Who likes Kyrie Irving? It's a difficult question. Who likes him? Oh, man. <laughs> All right, Cavs, we'll talk, we'll talk Cavs, to you. Cavs fans? Uh, I mean, he made, the biggest shot. he made the biggest shot of the 16 final. I guess he kind of... Got out of there too, though. Yeah. Oh, I know. KD. KD still likes them. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Only guy. Only because they haven't played together yet. Uh, Bill, thanks for being on with us. We appreciate it. All right, I'm going to go in the attic and take care of the demons, too, guys. Yeah, they are okay it's with been you. Like a year since the last title. All right. How's everyone doing? How's Butch Hobson up there? Is he okay with uh, the Red Sox He's potentially fine. cheating? I mean. He's fine. Sugar Bear Hamilton's up there. Guy Lafleur. There's a lot of them up there. It's yeah. tough. Well, be careful on your way to the attic. I mean, your breathing has me concerned. <laughs> yeah, I <know. laughs> Hopefully I won't pass out. <laughs> See you later.